It's midday. Welcome to the news with me, Aisha Yakubu. Coming up in the bulletin this afternoon. Health Facilities Regulatory Agency warns public and private health facilities face possible closure if they fail to acquire operational license from the agency. School feeding program caterers in three districts and in the northern region schooled on using clean cooking stoves. And in international news commemoration taking place in Rwanda to mark the 25th anniversary of the genocide that killed about a tenth of the population. We have details of these and other stories coming up in the next one hour. To our very first story, the Health Facilities Regulatory Agency says public and private health facilities face possible closure if they fail to take steps to acquire operational license from the agency. Now, most facilities are yet to pick forms for registration, though a deadline for acquisition of license has elapsed. Health Facilities Regulatory Agency, HEFRA, is mandated by law to license and monitor health facilities for the provision of quality public and private health care services. However, non-enforcement of the law has led to most health facilities not registering to acquire the license. The Health Institutions and Facilities Act 2011 obliges every health institution to acquire a license from HEFRA. But most health facilities, both public and private, have failed to register with the agency. Health Facilities Regulatory Agency issued a March 31 deadline for all institutions to register. But some health facilities are yet to heed to the call. So far, about 1,000 out of the over 30,000 health facilities have been licensed. Board Chairman of the HEFRA, Nana Oto Echampon, want failure to acquire the license will result in closure of the facilities. The grace period has expired and right now the implementation or the enforcement is no longer in our hands. It's in the hands of the law enforcement agencies. So the police can at any time uh, decide to pounce on you. So the earlier you come to start the process, the better. The Confanoti Teaching Hospital is the first among the four teaching hospitals to sail through the license process. Now we have submitted ourselves to an authority, to an agency and to the law. So therefore it allows them to come in from time to time. And they will also pick issues and complaints from within the facility to investigate and for them to evaluate and see whether those standards that they met are being maintained, are being improved or have slacked down. You're watching Midday Live. We're going for a short break. We'll return with more. Thanks for staying with us. Let's do some more stories now. Inadequate infrastructure at the Laura Municipal Hospital in the Upper West Region is affecting healthcare delivery. Yakubu Abdul Gafur reports the hospital has only four beds at the emergency unit. The Laura Hospital serves as a major referral center in the provision of healthcare delivery in the newly created municipality and beyond. The 110 bed capacity hospital has staff strength of 270. The facility was adjudged the best performing district hospital in the Upper West Region by the Ghana Health Service in 2003 and 2004. But lack of modern infrastructure at the facility is affecting healthcare delivery. The hospital has no neonatal intensive care. Records of patients are kept manually in files and folders. Stray animals move into the premises as the hospital is not walled. Municipal Superintendent of the Laura Municipal Hospital, Dr. Justine Dakura, lamented over lack of modern infrastructure 90 years after establishment of the facility. Emergency ward currently has only four beds and therefore the need for an ultra-modern accident and emergency center to cater for the growing needs for emergency services. The Upper West Regional Director of the Health Services, 
Dr. Osei Kufu Afre called for provision of infrastructure to meet increasing demands. It's really disheartening to know that after a pregnant woman has gone through nine months of pregnancy, delivers a child, and something little disturbs the child's survival, and a hospital like this doesn't have that rigorous uh, health care to take care of such a newborn. Member of Parliament for Laura Anthony Abayufa Kabo promised to help address challenges facing the hospital. The procurement processes for the construction of the Laura Fence Wall has completed and we are waiting for the award of a letter to the contractors to immediately start the construction of the fence wall. The neonatal ward procurement for renovation has been completed and in April the construction and renovation of the neonatal unit will commence. A chips compound has been built by a German philanthropist for the people of cement in the Krachi East municipality. Now the project, when operationalized, will cut the long-distance residence check to access health care. The community health planning and service chips compound took five months to complete. The project was part of the German couple's support to the needy and less endowed communities in the sub-region. Over 35,000 people in eight communities who have to trek about 25 kilometers to Dambai, Ikwanta and Ketekrachi to access health care will be relieved if the project is operationalized. The facility has not been equipped with the necessary medical equipment for its immediate use. Accommodation to house staff has however been attached to the facility. A borehole has been sunk to provide portable water for the facility. The Karachi East Municipal Director of the Ghana Health Service, Theresa Broku, promised to provide medical staff to man the facility. The Integrated Programs Director of the World Vision International Ghana, Richard Okai, said his outfit has supported with several other chips compounds. World Vision in Ghana has been at the forefront of promoting hand washing with soap, promoting ODF-free communities. Let us continue to encourage every household in the beneficiary communities to stop ODF by constructing appropriate household latrines. Michael Jato is the MP for Krachi East. So who sit down in Siho? Not one young perform a tran one. I'm saying not one year to man of Building hospitals will be in vain if there are no nurses to work. Therefore, I urge the chiefs and authorities to encourage more women in the district to enroll in nursing. Moving on, access to clean water and improved sanitation remains a challenge in most communities within the Sutifi North District of the Ahafu region, but an intervention under the Water Sanitation and Hygiene Initiative of World Vision International will soon bring relief to about 32,000 residents in the area. Here's a report by Ibrahim Abubakar. The Sustainable Development Goal 6 stipulates access to safe water and improved sanitation for all by 2030. In spite of this, most rural communities in the country continue to battle water challenges. More than half of the population in the Esutifi North District do not have access to clean water and improved sanitation. To help improve the sanitation, the district assembly is partnering stakeholders in the water, sanitation and hygiene sector to reach out to 32,000 residents in 56 communities with improved water and sanitation facilities by 2022. Programs manager in charge of WASH at World Vision International Ghana Robel Lambiso says $3.4 million has been committed to the four-year project. Sanitation activities will also be implemented in areas where we will do safe water supply interventions. The scope of the project will cover 56 communities. 
District Chief Executive for Isutifi North, Anthony Mensa, is optimistic the project will help solve water challenges facing residents. Now that this project has come, it's going to help by solving the water component of our problems. And, and then going into that, the sustainability of it will help minimize the challenges we have with regards to water. Ahafu Regional Minister Evan Sopoku Bobie lauded the initiative to achieve full coverage of clean water and improved sanitation. Wife of the Vice President Samira Baumia has been inducted into a full fellowship by the East Legon Rotary Club. The induction is in recognition for her humanitarian work and commitment to empowering the underprivileged in the society. Samira Baumia was to be inducted as an honorary member of the Rotary Club of Accra, Legon East, but Rotary International Director Olayinka Hakim insisted on full membership. Samira Baumia's foundation has championed several humanitarian projects. It's currently running the Samira Empowerment and Humanitarian Projects, SEHP. The foundation has donated equipment and items to several health facilities and institutions over the past couple of years. Samira Baumia revealed she was once a retractor, a youth arm of Rotary, and was happy to be finally a member of the Rotary family. I'm fully committed to the ideals of the four-way test. In the, things, in the things I say and how I think, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Would it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And the emphasis for me is all concerned. The test is the hallmark of Rotary. The strength of Rotary is not in the individual efforts, but in our combined efforts. And the power of our combined efforts has no limitations. I'm excited to learn more about Rotary, uh, the projects it's taken on, and especially the Rotary Club of Accra is Legon. Rotary International Director Ulainka Hakim inducted the wife of a vice president. This pin is recognized in over 200 countries. And when people wear this pin, every other person in the more than 200 countries of ter and territories of the world that sees it, this pin sends a message, and that is... I'm reliable, I'm dependable, and I'm trustworthy. The Rotary Club of Accra, Legon East, also raised funds to support the first phase of the rehabilitation of a pediatric ward of the University of Ghana Hospital. The ward is currently in a deplorable state, and the project by the club, which is in three phases, will seek to give it a world-class outlook. Moving on, the Savannah Regional Minister and Member of Parliament for Salaga South, Adam Salifu Braima, is urging the overlord of Gonja land, Yagbonwura Tuntumba Borisa I, to kickstart processes towards resolving all the outstanding chieftaincy disputes in Gonja land. There's more in the following report by Christopher Mwaku. Currently, four paramounts, namely Bole, Damongo, Klo, and the Makango all have two rival chiefs each. While some of the chiefs were enskinned by the overlord of Gonjaland, Yagmonura Tuntumba Bor Esa I, the rivalry chiefs have been either enskinned by a kingmaker or self imposed. The newly appointed Savannah Regional Minister, Adam Salifu Brema, who began work officially on April 4 at Damango encouraged the Yagmonra to use his good office to end all chieftaincy conflicts in the area. If we start on the note of peace, by educating our people the, the negative effects of war, sort of, in this conflict, millions of money has been used. My preoccupation is on peace. Unfortunately for us, our chiefs understand that. They are initiating it. We are lucky they've started on their own, initiating to get peace so that they will get, we can get the peace of mind and concentrate on development. He was worried government was spending so much on ending conflict and security in the area, while same could have been channeled into development-oriented projects. So we need a cooperation of everybody to let us succeed. And all I'm saying is that the enemy we have is time. We don't have time, but I want to assure people that when I take office, 
we will turn Savannah and make Savannah a model out of the six regions. Flood victims of Paburi in the Wa municipality of the Upper West region are undertaking a self-financing project of desilting a drainage in the area. Now the victims embarked on the project after they had their property destroyed in last year's downpour. Here's a report by Yakubu Abdul Gafur. Last year's floods affected a number of communities. In the immediate aftermath of the floods, victims formed an association and registered 38 households. The various households contributed 200 cities to the opening of the drainage. Residents have since raised 4,730 cities for the excavator to start operations. Properties and other things have gone back. We are so much committed to the project that we, a proposal was made to levy ourselves. We were all fed up here. So everybody was serious of getting solution for this place so that the next rainy season time we will not experience this. One municipal chief executive, Alhaji Isahaku Tahiru Mumin, said government has a comprehensive plan to construct the whole tributary to link up with the main gutter from the Wa Central Market. Now, Paramount Chief of Taku Traditional Area in the Nadowili Kaleo District of the Upper West Region, now with Dada Nanga II, has commended government for embarking on rehabilitation of dams into irrigation facilities. He was happy the project will help in the all-year-round farming for farmers in the area. Here's a report again by Yakubu Abdul Gafur. The project is to increase resilience in the areas of water resources of communities to fighting climate change and poverty. At a sword cutting ceremony to hand over one of the dams to a contractor for rehabilitation, Paramount Chief of Takwa Traditional Area, Na Widana Nanga II, commended government for the initiative. All along we have been thinking that uh, unless we supplement our uh, rainfed farming mm -hmm. with uh, irrigation farming, uh, our incomes cannot be enough to uh, drive away uh, poverty. Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Kwabna Frimpon Boatin said government has shown support to a great sector with a number of projects initiated since assuming office. The young men, uh, you can make the difference. Yes. We, we can provide the inputs. Uh, but it depends upon our attitude towards farm. We are bringing uh, all our resources together, human resources, our power, the money that we can get from within and from outside yeah. to make a change. The Nandoli Kalo District Chief Executive Catherine Lankono said the rehabilitation of the dam will help reduce rural urban migration. I'm sure it's going to reduce drastically because they're going to have all year round farming. We can already see that even with the already um, old structure that they had, they were doing some form of um, farming. In some more stories, government has commenced work to construct and rehabilitate 10 dams in the northern part of the country. This is part of the Adaptation Fund project geared towards tackling climate change and improving li livelihoods. Minister of Environment, Science and Technology and Innovation, Professor Kwabna Frimpon Boatin, started his tour at Bali in the Savannah region. He paid a curtsy call on the district chief executive of the area. Professor Frimpon Boatin then visited a border community between Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire. At the border community, he inspected works on boreholes, installation of solar irrigation systems, and women groups in shea butter and granite oil extraction. At Kesiasi, also in the Boli district, the minister cut sword for work on the Kesiasi Dam Rehabilitation Project. Professor Frimpon Boatin said the idea of the project is to promote all year agriculture. We spend so much money in this country on behalf of the people in the north, and when we come down, we don't really see much as what has happened. So this time around, uh, the president is serious. Uh, he is um, giving instruction directives that whatever that is business, we should make sure that is carried through. That agriculture, forages, education is improving and people here can earn their living throughout the year. 
A representative of the UNDP funding partners of the project said the projects are part of efforts to achieve the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. According to the UNDP, it is committed to building resilience and the communities to carry on their livelihoods. Now, the whole Technical University and the Renoir University of the Applied Sciences in Germany have signed an MOU to develop staff capacity and student exchange programs. Now, Vice Chancellor of the whole Technical University, Professor Ben Q. Honyanuga, disclosed this at the 19th congregation in Ho. The whole Technical University was established. 51 years ago to train technical and vocational skills labor for industry and commerce. 1,290 students graduated at this year's congregation. The council chair of the whole technical university, Professor Emmanuel James Aflu, pledged the council will provide the needed support to management. The governing council is well positioned and is prepared to provide the necessary support to management and the university to become not only a reference point for hospitality and training and business studies, but also to identify and consolidate other big areas. In this regard, I wish to urge faculty to embrace the culture of research, publication, and entrepreneurship as a way of adding to existing knowledge in their Acting Vice Chancellor of the whole Technical University, Professor Ben Honyanuga, said the university has put in place a strategic plan aimed at achieving academic excellence. In order to boost teaching and learning, we have decided to invest heavily in ICT, which is becoming the key interface to delivering quality education. The directorate of ICT migrated from the shared bandwidth to dedicated bandwidth to provide wider coverage of internet access to the university community. The directorate acquired an initial 5 megabyte dedicated bandwidth in 2017. Currently, we have upgraded it to 50 megabytes, which is currently undergoing testing and will be fully operational from tomorrow. Graduates who distinguish themselves in various fields of studies receive special awards. Still in the water region, 195 persons with disability in the Agotime Ziofe district have received food items and other working tools. The package is under the Assembly's Common Fund Livelihood Intervention. Under the District Livelihood Empowerment Programme, the Agotime District Assembly received 638 applications. 195 applications were considered. The Agotime District Chief Executive, Dexon Azopi, said the items will help improve living standards. District Chairman of Persons with Disability commended the Assembly for the support. You're watching Midday Live, which is also live on DSTV Channel 279. We're taking a break, and after the break, we have more for you. Please stay with us. Special thanks for staying with us. Let's do some more stories. Now, the Ghana Revenue Authority is exploring opportunities to rake in more revenue from night trading activities in Kumase, which has seen an increase in recent times. Officials say the night markets are among potential avenues in the informal business sector to expand the tax net in the Ashanti region. The Ashanti Regional Branch of the Ghana Revenue Authority contribution to the total national revenue mobilization is about 4%. This is mainly due to the low tax compliance among informal sector players. The Domestic Revenue Division of the GRA is strategizing to rope in all income earning activities, especially traders who operate at night. Night trading activities is on the increase in areas like Bantama, Central Market, Dr. Mensa and Tech Junction. Chief Revenue Officer in charge of a doomed small taxpayer office, Isaac Kofikui, says the move forms part of measures to expand the tax net. In certain areas in Kumasi here, you would agree with me that night activity 
I'm not talking of nightclubs. I'm not talking of restaurants, which are normally open throughout the day. I'm talking of people who operate only at night. And we have uh, made all the plans and we are on to them. The Ghana Revenue Authority says the region is on course to meet its revenue targets for this year. The general public has been advised to file tax returns before the April 30 deadline. Failing to submit the return is also an offence. And if you don't keep proper records on which your returns are based, it's also an offence. We want to be truthful to each other so that our assessment of your income and your profit and therefore your taxes will be so fair. The authority is targeting to double the number of taxpayers in the country to generate enough revenue for development. The public has also been urged to register for their tax identification number. The World Education Incorporated is implementing a project on clean cooking stoves for caterers of the school feeding program in three districts in the northern region. Now, the project, which will see about 245 caterers trained on how to use clean cooking techniques, is seeking to reduce the amount of charcoal used in cooking. Here's a report by Christopher Mwako. About 69% of all urban households in Ghana use charcoal for cooking and heating, and the annual per capita consumption is around 180 kilograms. Charcoal production is concentrated in the transition zones between the forest and the savannah woodlands. Most of the wood comes from savannah trees, which are felled for this purpose, and also from logging residues. Brongahafo region produces 34% of charcoal annually, whilst the northern, savannah and northeast regions produce 27% coming second. Charcoal burning continues to be a source of livelihood to many households in this part of the country. The policy advocacy and the communication manager of GACA, Raymond Kusogbo, said government has a lot to do to remedy the situation. The devices are such that it supports thermal combustion and the heat dissipation goes direct to the pot. So it takes a little time for the, for the food to be cooked. So these improved clean cooking technologies are very safe. They, they prevent a lot of burns. It, it uses less energy as I have emphasized. He added that in every four tons of trees cut down for charcoal, only one ton of charcoal is produced. It comes with implication on the environment and the forest resources are depleted over the last uh, decade at the annual rate of 2%. The program manager for West African Clean Cooking Alliance, Akosia Anobil, indicated the need for the introduction of a more conservative way of cooking. Thus, she said, will reduce the consequences associated with excessive charcoal use. What's important about these projects really is being able to share knowledge, give factual information about what it is that um, these these cookstoves are going to do to improve their lives, and not just the cookstoves, but even just the idea of um, cooking inefficiently and how it's not only affecting their health but also the environment. According to the United Nations report. 17,000 people die in Ghana from emission of smoke. Sustainable Development Goal 3 and 13 calls for action on good health and well-being and climate actions. Moving on, women and players in the maritime industry have underscored the need to push for gender equality in the male-dominated industry, both at sea and on shore. The women also want a gender-based policy which will empower more women to helm of affairs. Josephine Frimpong has more in the following report. About 200 women from East south and west of africa and the international body have gathered here in accra to brainstorm on the role of women in maritime and how to tap into the blue economy women in shipping port management marine navy logistics and professionals met at the south africa region conference of western ghana western ghana was founded to support the advancement of women in the leadership roles.
speakers at the conference spoke about the need for women to tap in the multi-sectorial experience and advance in maritime technology. If women are to be fully included in the maritime industry, discussions cannot be limited to participation in one or two areas only. Creating a community of experienced women in maritime occupations needs to take place at several levels and in various sectors of the industry. Advantages for being inclusive. The goal of WESTA is not only to elevate the dialogue, but to provide the industry with the resources and tools it needs to propel us towards true gender diversity and make sure we recognize all the talent available for the roles we have ashore and at sea for today and tomorrow. Uh, resolutions I would look forward to is that each of the maritime agencies in our region should develop an institutional framework that will promote gender-based policies in their respective agencies. Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization, IMO, Kitak Lim, called for more gender equality. Today, IMO support gender equality and the empowerment of women through fellowship by facilitating access to high-level technical training for women in maritime sectors in developing countries particularly. The Minister of Transport, Kweku Ofori Eskiyama, stressed government's commitment to support women in the industry. Some participants spoke to the news team. But the door has been opened for women to build a solid foundation to continue to progress in the public sector and in the private sector. Um, and that the momentum we need to continue this drive to ensure equality in business places and in workspaces. The ocean is big enough for everybody. So having we saw theme of today on the blue economy is gratifying because that has always been the aims and strategy of the African Union to which Women Africa is a part of. Awards were presented to deserving personalities in the industry, including the former CEO of the Ghana Shippers Authority, Dr. Kothimbia, and the ESCO member and international director in charge of African region for Western International, Mrs. Nadine Swa Aite. The event was on the theme, the role of women in enhancing the potential of the African blue economy. Josephine Frempon, TV3 News, Accra. In some more stories, assembly members of the Keta Municipal Assembly members have overwhelmingly endorsed the president's nominee, Godwin Eduji Efa, as municipal chief executive. Now, the nominee scored 28 out of a total of 30 votes cast. Here's a report by Robert Abelba. Approval of the MCE comes despite the purported discontent showed by some persons believed to be members of the new patriotic party. The Volta Regional Minister, Dr. Yao Achibod Lecha, in a short speech to the Assembly members, asked them to approve the nominee. The nominee, Godwin Eduji Ifa, at the end of the voting secured 28 votes out of 30 vote cast. In his address, the MCE promised to work on poor roads in the municipality. I want to assure you that the mandate given me and the confidence we both have made together, we will use it for the development of the Keta municipality. In a related development, a 60-year-old surveyor, Wilson Kofi, and the assembly member for Anyako electoral area was confirmed the presiding member after pulling 28 votes out of 30 votes cast. The two were later sworn in by the Keta Circuit Court judge, his lordship, Kwame Foley. In entertainment news this afternoon, several underground artists thronged Studio B this Friday to try their luck as TV3 Music Music opened for auditions. A move to make more way for upcoming artists to showcase their musical talent to the world on the live show. Love, she make you Mr. 
Inability to get media exposure has been a major concern for many in the creative arts sector. And many underground artists have lamented for unavailability of support. Actors, musicians and poets seize every opportunity given by the media to exhibit their works to the world. Dedicated to supporting underground artists, Music Music had its second open auditions, a move to make way for upcoming artists to perform and make their musical works known to the world. Having unearthed many talents in the past, several underground artists from in and out of Accra thronged to Studio B this Friday to audition for TV3's Music Music. I'm a tardy based artist, but now I'm currently in Accra trying to promote my songs. We've been case watching this, this platform. It's promoted a lot. Today, if I'm here, I'm blessed to be here and I'm blessed to be a part of Music Music. Now, The Garden City came alive Saturday night when Ghana's A-list artists stormed the Kumasi City Mall to entertain patrons at the 2019 Vodafone Ghana Music Awards nominees jam. From the boss of the BIM Nation through to the Shutter Movement president, the artists treated patrons to one hit after the other as they partied the night away till the early hours of Sunday, April 7. Now, the show kicked off with performances from nominees for the VGME and Sun category gave off their best to entertain hundreds of patrons who thronged the venue to have fun. The likes of Temarapa, Yapuno, Osei Chrome King, Flo King Stone and others also treated patrons to some punchlines. Shatawale also mounted the stage performing one hit after the other as crowd jammed to his tunes. Now Stoneboy also who came through with three uh, he came through with thrilling performances as patrons sang along. That's all for Midday Live this afternoon. Thanks so much for your company. There's more news on our website. It is 3news.com. My name is Aisha Yakubu. Have a good afternoon.